Hey everybody, welcome into the first edition of Rapid Recap by us at Inside Nebraska. I'm joined by Steve Marek and Greg Smith, Senior Recruiting Analyst and Staff Writer Inside Nebraska. I'm Zach Carpenter, the publisher of Inside Nebraska. And fellas, we had a pretty pretty busy day, hell of a day today. <laughs> um, it was, today marks Nebraska's third practice of fall camp and first media availability outside of Big Ten Media Days. Um, we had six players, five players. It's hard to count because we had so yeah, many lot, coming in. Lot of there was a lot of stuff going on today. <laughs> yeah, we had Eric Shenander, uh, Mike Dawson, and uh, Travis Fisher, along with Caleb Tanner, Ty Robinson, Miles Farmer, Marcus Buford, mm -hmm. Marquise Buford, yep. and am I forgetting? They're, Nash Hutmacher. Nash Hutmacher up there as well. So I just kind of want to break down, um, hear from you guys what, what the biggest takeaways were that you saw. Um, Steve, starting with you, I mean, I know you spent a lot of time um, over with uh, at Shenander's booth and mm -hmm. talking about defensive linemen. So what, what did you sort of glean from all of that? Yeah, the thing that he uh, said after the third practice was right now they're just worried about like getting getting calls correct, lining up correctly. You know, there's not a lot of like physicality going on right now um, um, from what he said. But uh, yeah, just uh, talking about him wanting to, you know, implement a mentality of more punch outs, more fumble recoveries, more interceptions, more turnovers, uh, basically. They didn't do a, heck, a whole heck of a lot of that uh, last year, so that was um, kind of clearly on Eric Shenander's mind. Um, but yeah, he touched on a bunch of stuff. Um, in the defensive backfield, um, Marquise Buford's name was brought up a lot. Um, he said a lot of good things um, about Quentin Newsom and the leadership steps that he's taken. Um, he mentioned a lot of uh, good things with Miles Farmer, the safety, whose back is kind of against the wall going into a uh, fall camp here and, and needing to impress a lot to keep his job. Um, and as well with the interior D lineman, Ty Robinson, he's, he said, quote, I think Ty can have a really special year. So he's, you know, they're, they're really expecting, I, can, I think the coaches on this staff, of Ty Robinson to be the leader up front in that interior D line um, and to just make the next step, make make the next step and, and next move in his career here at Nebraska as the number one guy um, kind of leading and leading into everything. And, you know, he brought up a good uh, quote, maybe the quote of the, of the first um, <laughs> practice, practice session. He's the henchman. He's trying to be the henchman of, of the D line group, just getting on guys. If they're, if they're late to a meeting, he's, he's on there, he's yelling. If they're doing something wrong at practice, it's Ty Robinson who's speaking up. So that's really good to see. Yeah, it's definitely, I think that that though to me was just a continuation of what we saw at Big Ten Media Days, right? Yeah. So we, we saw Garrett Nelson and those guys that are at Media Days talk about, and Travis Volkolek too, about the increased accountability, like peer to peer, right? I think Scott Frost said it too at Media Days that, you know, good teams, they police themselves before mm -hmm. things make it to the coaches and hearing those things from Ty Robinson and the guys today, I think kind of reinforces that, right? I think that's a really good thing and it's positive um, steps in the right direction. But I think another thing to me that Shenander mentioned that stood out to me was the rotation and safety right I think that that is one of kind of the key questions once you get past kind of running back and offensive line right I think the rotation at safety and who's going to be back there it's not necessarily a bad problem if they're inexperienced but they, I think there's talent back there for the guys to be able to work with you just have to figure out who's going to be back there and we heard from a couple of those guys today yeah it, it, that's something that you haven't really seen in the past with like a Travis Fisher backfield but it's because he he said that you know in years past he hasn't you know, been comfortable to have a rotation back there. So that's something that we're going to see uh, maybe especially early in, early in the season when they're trying to work out the backfield and see who steps forward and, and really takes a role back there. Yeah, and piggybacking off of leadership, um, accountability, those sorts of factors. I mean, I don't know if it, you guys felt like it, this was an extension of media, Big Ten Media Days where it's talking season, where it's all about <laughs> yeah. accountability and yeah. who's showing up, who's really buying in, like the, the Yeah, those buzzwords. Yeah. 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 Um but it does feel like uh, with the defense back group because I was I was over with Caleb Tanner a bit, but then most of my time was spent with uh, with Travis Fisher and he talked about the leadership that that, that room has shown with uh, with Quentin Newsom who we've talked about is emerging as that he's that veteran in the group now, right? Yeah. So he's been emerging as sort of the voice in the face of that of that unit and um, they they been making these been holding these player led film sessions after mm -hmm. um, and talking about Miles Farmer like he's been sort of growing as a leader and saying like all right guys put put your phones up here like all the young guys put your phones up here we're locked in we're paying attention um, is there anybody that that you Steve is, has, has emerged in that defense back room and you're like when we do get to see we get a 25 30 minute practice window on on Monday that you're looking 
um, to focus on at the yeah. defensive back rooms outside of Quentin Newsom, but yeah. go ahead. I, I know where Quentin he's Newsom. going. It's fine. Just go ahead, though. I will well, play. I got two, really. Yeah. So my first one is Deshaun Singleton. I'm really, really, really excited to see what he what he brings to a defensive backfield. You know, he's he's coming from a junior college in Kansas and, and at Hutchinson, and you know, at six foot three, 205, 210 pounds, he has a Big Ten frame. He has a speed. I, I still hark back to what Travis Fisher said on the first day of spring practice. He's got speed, and I can't coach that. You know, he's got size, and I can't coach that either. So I'm just really, really interested to see how quickly, because uh, Fisher also said the thing that's holding Deshaun Singleton back is his knowledge of the playbook, which is understandable. I mean, he just got here. He's he's one of the new 33 new faces on the team, so it's going to take some time to learn an entire new playbook and understand what he's supposed to do. But when he does, that's a big, fast, strong athlete back in the back end of Nebraska's uh, defense that I think is going to be really useful. And along with uh, Deshaun Singleton, you know, I'm going to be interested in Miles Farmer, but. Marcus Buford Jr. I mean that that kid. How can you not root for that kid? I mean he's. I think he's going to have a really really big role, um, especially kind of as a, as an in the box safety. And when you look at him, you don't really see that because he's on the smaller end for a safety. But boy, I mean I think he brings it when when um, he's he's kind of meeting ball carriers. And you know I, he had a really great quote about you know they're going to have to make make me feel that I'm smaller or something to that effect. We'll have said, more of that. He said that he will absolutely. He goes. He also said it doesn't matter how big a guy yeah. is. I'm just going to go in there full force and we'll see what happens. Man like, after my own heart. Yeah, yeah, he, doesn't, he doesn't care about this, the lack of size, right? And I think that that's what Fisher really respects about oh, him. Yeah. Like, he's been talking about that since he's been coaching Marcus Buford, that that has been something that has really struck, struck yeah. him and really impressed him about Buford. Um, it's just tenacious and so willing to just throw himself in. It, what's interesting about the defensive back room is it's sort of this mix of veteran guys and the younger guys yeah. kind of nipping mm -hmm. at their heels saying, yeah. and that's something that Travis Fisher talked about when I was asking him about Quentin Newsom. Um, yeah, he's the he's the face of the of that room, and he has potential stardom. But like, you can't you can't rest on your laurels. I mean, yep. he was talking about how I asked him about Quentin being left off the off the Jim Thorpe Award watch list, which I had asked Quentin about that at Big Ten Media Days, and Travis said like he should be upset, but like you you got to go get it. You're not it's not just gonna get handed to you. You have to go dominate college football. And him and Buford, I've been thinking like for the past two weeks, when I've like, been diving into it more, those are two potential stars in that room. Yep. And I think I think you guys agree, especially yeah. on Buford. I mean, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, and another potential star is Caleb Tanner. We got <laughs> yeah. to see him, right? We got to see him today. Talk today. Like, and, and it's funny for the, like That's those so of you cool. watching this, it's really <laughs> interesting. Like the development of Caleb Tanner and his story has just been really interesting to me. And I've always kind of I've kind of I've kept an eye from his recruiting, right? And so remember that he was once committed to Auburn. He ends up picking Nebraska with the funny hat ceremony, right? Going all the way back <laughs> to when that's when he burst on the scene. Um, and then he was billed as that hybrid edge guy that Nebraska desperately needed. And I don't think that he has been he – He's not, been, he's not been a disappointment by any means. He has not been a full-fledged star, I think is what you could say. But he's shown steady improvement over his time at Nebraska. I think it's also fair to say that his best year as a Husker last year. And I think that he can continue to take steps forward. And I think guys like Garrett Nelson and Oshawn Mathis will really help him. But we got to hear from him today. Um, we'll have much more on what he had to say because he did have a, a lot of insightful things to say. Um, and it was just interesting to hear from him for maybe the first time that we've gotten to talk to him since he's been here. Yeah, that's one thing that Eric Fisher also said is getting those three edge guys on the field at the same time in second and long and especially third and long situations, Garrett Nelson, Caleb Tanner, and O'Shawn Mathis. He said it was like a fun a fun thing to obviously try to draw up ways to get them on the right. field and, and kind of decide what they want to do on those any given situations. But yeah, it's going to be really fun to see, you know, if the defense, if the run defense holds up and opposing offenses are wanting to put the ball in the air um, on second, second and long and third and long situations, you're going to see those three guys out there and they're going to get after, they want to get after the quarterback and get home at way more than they did last year. Um, so that that's really going to be something to watch, especially early in the season. And so you guys talked about uh, one of your favorite quote, quotes of mine was from Caleb Tanner. We want, we expect to have a top 10 defense this year, which is yeah. high, high yeah. goals. I mean, yeah. a, what, what do you guys think about that? I mean, with, with the way that you just said them getting those guys on the field yeah. at the same time and sort of uh, putting more dynamic electric defensive playmakers on the field. What are your guys' thoughts on potential top 10 defense? I mean, is that a little too far? That's tough with the with the guys that they lost. When you lose a chess piece like JoJo Doman and a guy and other Cam Taylor Britt, guys like that from that defense, I think it's it's tough to see that. 
but they do have the potential to be very good. I think the thing that, that I keep coming back to is Steve talked about right off the top with Tananda's emphasis on takeaways and turnovers yeah. um, and then producing those sacks. It, it, like We saw Nebraska play really solid just team defense last year. I would like to see where they could land if they produce more of those sacks and turnovers. I don't know about top 10, but I think that they could be a more impact defense this year. And it's something that if you look at the schedule and you look at the offenses that they are playing, so they, they kick off with, with Northwestern. Northwestern might have more questions than Nebraska does right <laughs> yeah, now. Like, who's going to play quarterback at Northwestern? Yeah. I don't know yet. Um, so, yeah, it's something where you look at the schedule and you look at the offenses that they're going to be playing. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be an uphill battle to be top 10, you know, in the, in the country in, in defense. But I like having a goal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Put it out there and try to meet it. I absolutely love that. And, and you brought up with the, uh, the nickel position. One, one thing of note, uh, Javen Wright, who has had a, a lot of medical um, kind of just issues in his past, great news on him. He is 100% full go. He's been out there. Uh, Shane Anderson, really happy about that. With Javen Wright, you have a big six foot three, six foot four, lanky, tall defender, you know, who can stick his run, stick his nose in the run game and, and hold his own in the pass game too. So he's going to be in there along with um, uh, Chris Klarovich, who is uh, working at Nickel, along with uh, Isaac Gifford, too, the local guy out of uh, Lincoln Southeast at, at Nickel. So they got three really good options at Nickel, and it's just going to be interesting to see who's out there and what in what situations. If it's more of a, a run set that the offense is showing, maybe that's Klarovich out there from his linebacker um, background from last year. If it's more of a pass set, maybe that's maybe that's Gifford out there, um, the former safety with the pass skills that he has. So it's good, just going to be really fun to see how uh, a really good defensive coordinator. I feel and Eric Shenander kind of matches guys up with what the offense is showing. Yeah, and we're going to see all the guys that we saw today in actual action on Monday. And it's a brief window, but it is a window something. where we're going to be able to see some of the guys in, in pads. I don't know if they'll be shoulder pads only or full pads, but we'll be able to sort of see them and get our uh, analysis and thoughts just like we did today. And we're going to have a lot more content uh, coming throughout the afternoon and over the weekend at Inside Nebraska. So we encourage you to subscribe. Uh, to subscribe to Inside Nebraska at nebraska.rivals.com and subscribe to the Inside Nebraska YouTube page. And we'll be back again for Steve Marek and Greg Smith. I'm Zach Carpenter, and we'll see you Monday.